Hey, Lady Ada. Okay. It's time for new products. New, 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 yeah. new, 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 new. All right, new, new, let's new. do this thing. First up, uh, Medisa. This is the Minty Synth Kit. This is a fun synth kit from... I don't know the name of the company. You like things in mint. Maori stringed instruments. I like things in tins. This is a great kit. It's not too hard. There's a bunch of components, but you can put it together as a little laser cut thing. You, did, you do need to get a tin. We can use an Altoids yeah. tin. And this is what it looks like. Can Play that it. funky music. Hold on, hold on. Play it. I, shh, shh. I have to have it um, over here. Okay, and then I'm going to zoom in. Actually, hold on. No, bad. Good. Do you okay. Want to zoom in more? No, 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 no. It's great. It's, great. it's checking okay. the lights. Are you all ready? I'm ready now. Okay. okay so you've got um, like five knobs, and you got some buttons, and you can check the the quick start guide for all the stuff you can do. But I'll just have it run the demo. So you have like a nice music, and you can change the tempo. Or you can change like the effects, the voices. Okay. It's a little pocket synth that fits in a mint tin. That's cool. Yeah, that's fun. You can bleep and you can write your own, um, you can enter in your own songs using the buttons. I didn't have time to do it, so I'm just going to run the demo program. But you can basically like tweak multiple different effects. And it's kind of a nice synth. And it sounds really good yeah, for um, an AVR synth. And yeah. it's Arduino compatible. You have a little FTDI port over here. You plug an FTDI cable. And you can reprogram it and check out the software. And it's totally open source. OK. All right. Next up. So this is fun. This is the Displayatron hat from Pimeroni. These folks are friends of ours. And uh, this is an oh, update. Are uh, you going to be able to show it? That's a video. No. Was it? Yeah, you, this, this, not this one, the next one. Click the next Was one. Was it? Yeah, it's Okay, great. Oh, shoo. okay. I thought, because you know, I'm doing multiple things. No, I know. Things, it's crazy. Right, anyway, this is what it looks like. Yeah, because I didn't have a demo because this video is great. So, um, it's a, so they have the Displayatron 3000, which already existed. And it was like a shield type thing for Raspberry Pi. And now they have the hat version, so if it's exactly hat shaped and it's hat compatible. It comes with capacitive touch buttons, um, 16 by 3 LCD, has RGB LEDs in the background. It's a really nice um, RGB character display. It comes fully assembled, works with the Raspberry Pi, all the different kinds, um, except for the Model 1B. It works with the B. Plus, the Pi 2, the A+, plus, but not the ones with the 2 by 13 and what works with the current ones that are, have the, the longer strip of pins. Mm -hmm. It is lovely. You can easily program it with all sorts of stuff, as you can see. OK. Um, next up. This is the piano hat. It has two times eight capacitive touch uh, sensors on there. So it basically has 16 capacitive buttons, and they're arranged in um, kind of a piano keyboard style where there's um, you know a full octave control and as well as octave up, octave down, and then some other button. I can't remember if you go to the next button, I'll see it. Octave up, up, octave down instrument. So you can, there's some software that they wrote in Python so you can basically turn it into a little synthesizer. Um, the white LEDs light up when you touch. Um, it's a very cute little hat. Super cute. Yeah. OK. Next up, we just put these in right before the show. This was the Bake Light. Bakelite uh, Perf Ward. So we actually had a request for this because uh, this is something that people would usually get from Radio Shack. And of course, Radio Shack doesn't really exist no more, anymore. No Radio so um, fun, if you want to get Perf Ward from us, we have it. So this is Bakelite. And Bakelite, it's not FR4, what, what is mostly used for circuit boards these days. Instead, it's a paper phenolic with a, with a very, very thin fiberglass a coating that you use is just enough just to kind of hold it together. And what's good about this stuff is that you can basically cut it with scissors. So if you go to the overhead, I will show you. I'm going to go to the overhead. To the overhead. We're using these nice scissors that are like, you know, in intense crafty scissors. Um, just because if you have like a nice pair of fabric scissors, don't use those. But you shouldn't use those for even cutting paper. And then, um, you know, you have a big a sheet of this stuff. And then you just cut it down sort of like it was um, perforated paper. And so you can cut custom shapes. So like, let's say I want something that's more rounded. You can cut it. And it still has all the pads on the bottom. And so this has been um, historically used basically this way to make custom shapes. And like, if you're making a project, and you're like, oh, I have to fit in a box. Wow. Um, 
ice cream crazy. You can basically make it any shape you want. So it's like a skull PCB. It's, it's yeah, very skull. Yeah, good point. Very skull leg. Maybe we'll give a little bit more chin. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, There's good. Her skull heart. More skulls. Yeah. So let's say you want to have a circuit board that looks like a skull. Um, it has the standard 0.1 inch space pads. They're all copper pads. Um, they're not connected to each other. So what you do is. Uh, we, we have a video from Colin's lab about perforating breadboard, and you basically fold wires over and then and solder them point to point, and you can sort of drag solder over it. Um, and that's how you would make a, a circuit like this little Arduino compatible that we made on the perforate. And um, the good news about this stuff is, okay, so it's not double-sided. You don't get pads on both sides because it's not through-hole plated. Um, but that's okay. Um, you know, for, for most projects, this is fine. You just solder on the bottom. Um, but it, it, it's very easy to cut, very easy to customize, and it's really inexpensive. So you get like 10 sheets of this stuff for five bucks. It's really 50 cents a sheet. It just comes in a pack of 10, and like you can use that for like years. Okay. I think this is the first time anyone's ever done live cutting like this on the internet. Yeah. Until, until they pass laws against them, we're going to keep doing it. Okay. Yep. Next up, uh, uh, Nimbus, the friendly cloud entity, stopping by. Ooh. Hey. To store all your data forever. I want to. I want to. I want to. What do you want? Um, so one of the things I wanted to mention is um, when we do these Internet of Things projects, um, we try to stick to the thing that you came up with, Internet Things Bill of Rights, and uh, basically like open is better. And so uh, we're getting ready to open up all of Adafruit.io to everyone. Right now it's beta, private beta. We want more people to join it. And some of the things and some of the products. Also, it's for like really advanced people right now. Just yeah, we keep advanced. finding not like bugs, but like oh, yeah. the graph and like requests and, got, and stuff. We got some MQT, MQTT working with the IFTTTT working with the Zepia. So, anyways, lots of stuffs happening. Our if then this that channel should be live soon. Anyways, sign up for the beta because everyone's going to be able to access it soon. However, to make a long story short, we have a product and there's like a couple different versions of it, but. The main thing is, and this is the star of the show beside you tonight, it's a Phono 3G. Yay, it's the Phono 3G, as has been requested. And um, we'll see if those people who requested it actually bought Everyone's one. Everyone's like, you got 3G, you got 3G, yes, we have 3G. So historically, all of our cellular products, and most cellular products on the market for makers have been 2G, so it's GSM or GPRS. And those are fine. You know, you can actually use T-Mobile in the United States, and that's a GSM network. But it, like, if you want to use AT&T, it isn't. So you, it, unless you have a very old AT&T SIM, um, you can't get on the GSM network. And the GSM network under AT&T is going to close down in 2017. So like, even if you did have a GSM SIM, sorry, a 2G SIM, eventually it would stop working. So we do suggest T-Mobile for 2G SIM users. Um, 2G, 2G is very inexpensive. Uh, it works pretty well. It has pretty good coverage. Um, there's universal coverage in like Europe and, and China. However, what SIM card can run this? Our Tings? Our Ting, which is a, a T-Mobile distributor, basically oh. any T-Mobile. Okay. T-Mobile in the United States, T-Mobile distributors. Almost everything that isn't like AT&T or T-Mobile, if it has like Simple Mobile or like Boost Mobile, they're all T-Mobile distributors. So like, yeah. you just ask them, hey, who's the carrier? If it's T-Mobile, that means you can use your network. There's only two networks in the United States. Anyways, so if you uh, are cool with using a, a T-Mobile or Ting SIM, 2G is fine. Uh, grab with our, one of our phone 800s or 808s, which is a, a GSM network module. They're inexpensive. They're low power. They're very fully featured. Um, a lot of good stuff going on there. However, if you need 3G, um, we also have that option. So this is a 3G module. It uses Qualcomm. Um, I have a decapped photo of it somewhere on the product page or in the tutorial. It um, uses a Qualcomm chipset to basically connect to uh, HSDPA WCDMA. I don't remember the exact thing, but basically I used it. It connected to the 3G network. This means you can use pretty much any SIM in the world because everything now is, is 3G compatible. Um, and we have two different versions. We have American version and European version. That's right. The trade-off is, unlike GSM, which is like you know, you know quad band, all in one, there's two versions. There's the A version for America, the E version for Europe. So you can't swap them. You have to make sure you get the right one. Okay. Because the frequencies are different, and the, the frequencies aren't support. Like they don't, they can't change frequencies from one to the other. Okay. The other trade-off is it's a much more expensive because it's just a much more complicated chipset, and it uses more power because it's a higher bandwidth chipset as well. 
Oh, so it's optimized. Um, it's much larger too. I mean, there's like a lot of like, unfortunately, like not downsides, but there's trade-offs. If you want 3G, it's not going to be as inexpensive as 2G. It's not going to be as low power. It's not going to be as simple to use. Um, there's some differences between this this module and the phone 800 and 808. So if you're, you know, some basic stuff like calling and SMSs and like, yeah, that stuff works. But the TCP/IP under pinnings, the way you do TCP/IP, just is different. It's different enough that it's basically not supported right now. Yeah. We will try to add support, but it's not as nice and happy as the 800 or 808, which yeah, like made it like really, really easy. We like, worked on that a lot. This is an earlier module, yeah. so they didn't figure that out as much. Yeah. So if you're out there and you like hacking around with this type of stuff, um, please help and contribute to the library. Yeah, if you want. But it's, it's also like you're kind of a little bit more on your own. Like there's, it's just this is not. You know, despite being a 3G module and so more universal yeah. support, it doesn't have as much okay. documentation. And that said, it's a 3G module. Yeah. It is it. You wanted it. Y'all asked for it. You wanted it. We got it. Yeah. And the other thing is, um, you know, uh, eventually the network's pro the 2G network probably will go away, but it still eh, used. Yeah, I know. Not for a while. I mean, there's I know. For millions. The, for the panicky people, you could get this now. I am not. I'm yeah. I'm not concerned about it. There, I think there will be a 2G network in the United States. I mean, there are every every like Coke machine every has a thing. Machine that, to yeah. machine is GSM. Yeah. They're all using GSM because until very recently, only the last five years, you basically you could not get 3G modules. Like this is yeah. this very new, and they're they were so expensive. We might be one of the only cell phone manufacturers in the US right now. Yeah. Yeah. So right. 3G. So if you're wondering, well where's like 4G LTE? Um, you're not going to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. If you thought this was expensive, yeah. um, the LTE modules are really really expensive and I think it's basically a Linux computer with like a PCMCA right. slot. Like get we'll, get we'll an get an there. Android, get an Android phone and just like One nice thing about these 3G modules that, that is a little nice compared to the phone is you can plug it into at least a Windows computer, which I did, and it shows up as COM ports That's nice. and a modem. So you can actually, Ooh. I haven't tried it, but I believe you can just tether directly through it. So if you want to cool. use it as a tether, um, that'll just work. That's cool. Okay. Next up. Oh, there's also a GPS. Yeah. But it's not, it's not as good as the Fona 800 GPS, 808 GPS. It does work, but it's not as fast. And that, Lady Ada, is new products. Yay. Good work.